Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Nicola Marzari from uh, EPFL, and uh, I will give this talk on material discovery at the intersection of high throughput and high performance computing. Uh, the background of this uh, is the discovery of novel materials. Um, there is this uh, you know, thinking uh, that materials really enable the technologies that power our economy and uh, sustain our society. And uh, we have example here uh, uh, going uh, from the iron catalyst uh, for ammonia synthesis uh, developed by Fritz Haber uh, 100 years ago and that made possible a really uh, intensive production of food. Uh, uh, to the you know, nickel superalloys in uh, contemporary jet engines uh, protected uh, by thermal barrier coatings that allow these engines uh, to run at optimal efficiency, uh, to new industrial and uh, domestic uh, lightning uh, that is based on LED and then can cut uh, by a factor of 10 uh, our costs. Um, and in general, uh, we need uh, materials uh, for our society, for uh, uh, you know, many areas uh, for energy, for energy harvesting, conversion, storage and efficiency, for environmental protection, uh, for ICT technologies that uh, lie behind uh, all the hardware that actually praise uh, this, uh, this effort that we are discussing these days, uh, and in particular for the high tech, high value industry that characterize uh, uh, European uh, economies. And uh, one of the core points of this talk uh, uh, is passing the message that uh, these days uh, we are actually able to predict the material properties with simulations and in particular uh, with first principle simulations. Uh, a couple of examples are here. Uh, this is just predicting uh, the color of a material uh, that in the physics language uh, means uh, being able to predict uh, the interband and uh, intraband transitions that electrons uh, make uh, when are hit by uh, photons, uh, understanding the spectral response of our eyes, and at the end, uh, predicting how we would see, in this case, a metal, and what you see at the bottom is actually the result of the experiment. So there is very good agreement. And uh, we can see this also in a graph here. We are just uh, predicting the resistivity of a material uh, of uh, a monolayer of graphene. Uh, it's a function of temperature and it's a function of doping. And again, the agreement uh, uh, between theory and experiment is very good. So I want to present here our uh, technology stack for material discovery uh, that starts uh, from uh, the quantum engines uh, that are developed and perfected in Max. Uh, we use actually uh, quantum espresso together with Sirius. You will hear about both uh, uh, later on. Uh, and also we build on top of this uh, the infrastructure, in particular the operating system for high throughput computational science. This is the AIDA open source uh, Python framework uh, and also a dissemination platform for, for our data. So let me give you an example of how all of this work. Uh, we want to discover uh, novel two-dimensional materials. We want to exfoliate in organic materials exactly as Andre Geim and Kostya Novoselov did uh, with graphene, with scotch tape uh, to get to graphite. Uh, but we want to do this um, on a computer. So the first step is uh, ingesting uh, all the data about inorganic materials. Uh, so we have uh, uh, more than uh, 1 million entries uh, um, from uh, all the experimental database in existence. And if we just look at the stoichiometric compounds that are those that will exfoliate first, uh, we have uh, uh, more than 80,000 uh, uh, different entries. And we put those uh, into our computational microscope. That is, uh, uh, we use um, algorithms and quantum mechanical calculations to first understand uh, if the materials look layered, as here in the bottom uh, left corner. And if it is, uh, we do all the density functional theory characterization of the 3D parent uh, of the 2D child for the basic electronic, magnetic, uh, and the mechanical properties. And then uh, we look if there is uh, something interesting, if this could be, say, high mobility materials uh, for novel transistor, if they could be superconductors, if they could be membrane for separation if they could be photocatalysts. And uh, we can do this uh, with this uh, uh, HAIDA infrastructure in uh, automated uh, reproducible ways uh, 
uh, that preserve the full uh, provenance of the calculation. So this is just an example of one material uh, under the microscope and everything is automatically recorded by the operating system. So we can investigate a posteriori all our calculation, uh, but in particular, we can do them in a high throughput mode. Uh, we can actually, from a simple workstation, monitor more than 100,000 workflows per hour. So we are actually able to saturate with first principle calculation, uh, pre exa scale and even exa scale machines. So the result of this was first discovering a lot of novel materials, in particular find 1800 novel two dimensional materials. And now we are investigating them for interesting properties uh, from uh, electronics uh, to magnetic properties, transparent conductors, uh, lithium ion conductors, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, let me just give you a couple of um, examples first. Uh, uh, we found the first uh, room temperature quantum spinol insulator, uh, so-called cane Meli quantum spinol insulator, the Tejia Kutin gate. That's a mineral that was discovered in Brazil in 2008. It made it into our database. It had very interesting properties. The experimental colleagues were able to make it, characterize it, and the characterization, as you can see, is identical to our predictions. And then also a novel prediction of a material that has been made uh, but has never been tested for superconductivity. In our opinion, this tungsten nitride uh, would be the world record holder uh, uh, for superconductivity in 2D with a critical temperature of 27 Kelvin. This is just uh, um, submitted. And so this is actually the first time we show this. Uh, now, as I mentioned, the background of this, the operating system, is something that we call uh, AIDA, that is a Python infrastructure open source that we developed together uh, with Robert Bosch, and that really uh, powers uh, all our calculation and uh, makes it possible also to disseminate uh, the workflows, uh, but also the results uh, in our uh, portal, in our uh, Max portal that is called uh, the Materials Cloud, uh, where everyone can go and that will look at this five section and in particular found uh, simulation tools, uh, found simulation services deployed on the European Open Science Cloud, but also all the data uh, from these um, calculations. So let me conclude uh, reminding you the main uh, core topic, materials uh, enable the technologies that power our economy and sustain our society. And these days we can uh, predict material properties and discover novel materials uh, with first principle simulations. Uh, and that really thanks to Max, uh, we are uh, ready to do this on pre exascale or exascale machine, uh, you know, already from a workstation uh, managing uh, hundreds of thousands of first principle calculation per hour. Uh, and with this, uh, um, I thank you for your attention. I thanks Max and praise and great to be here today.